edition of Tech It Out, we find out how potential drugs can work to treat COVID-19. A much-weighted Mars mission is delayed as the pandemic hits the world of science. And just like humans, bumblebees can recognize objects through touch. But as the search for the vaccine continues, the medical community is moving fast to find drugs that can treat the coronavirus. On this drugs, two tracks are being pursued. The first one is antibodies against the virus. Antibodies are proteins that the immune system makes to fight invaders such as viruses. If the virus tries to invade again, the body will remember and quickly produce an army of antibodies. Actually, vaccines are designed in this way to trigger your immune response, but it is a longer-term solution. A quicker approach is to acquire the antibodies from people who have recently recovered from COVID-19 because the antibodies are still circulating in their blood. In other words, this treatment transfers the immunity to sick people. It has been used in past flu pandemics. In the latest edition of Chinese authorities' treatment guidelines, blood plasma from recovered patients has been included. But that doesn't mean it's risk-free, so this is only for an emergency situation. The plan stresses that people should only be given plasma if they are critically ill. Another option is antiviral drugs. But contrary to what most people think, antivirals are not designed to kill the virus, but actually to stop it from reproducing. Coronavirus has a simple structure with its genetic material, the RNA sitting inside and protein shell coating outside. Its outer spikes can engage the receptor on the cell's surface, resulting in the merger of the virus with the cell, just like opening up a door. Then the virus can enter the cell wrapped in the vesicle, like taking a bus, and after it gets in, the bubble breaks and releases its RNA and then two things will happen. Those RNA will hijack the cell and use the material inside to make up more viral protein shells. And it uses its own viral enzyme to copy its RNA. Newly produced RNAs and protein shells will be assembled into new viruses, moving out of the cell and infecting more cells in the same way. Different antivirals will interfere at different points in this process of viral replication. For example, chloroquine is the drug that has recently been added to China's treatment guidelines. It steps in at the beginning stage of the infection. It blocks the virus's ability to acidify this bubble and causing this virus to be trapped inside and stopping it from releasing its RNA into the cell. Another drug, remdesivir, which is still under clinical trial, works in a different way. Simply speaking, when the virus wants to replicate its RNA, it needs many genetic blocks as raw materials to line them up and make up a new chain. There are four types of building blocks, A, U, G, and C, and remdesivir will act as one of them. It looks like the real block A, but it's actually the fake one. It will squish itself into the entire copied RNA sequence and will replace the natural one and cause the entire copy to fail, just like when you insert a wrong letter and misspell the entire word. Also in the treatment guidelines, there is the drug combination of lopinavir and ritonavir. The combination targets protease, which is the tool that viruses use to cut up very long proteins into smaller pieces of proteins that are needed for the virus to make new copies. Now that tool is taken out. In addition to those drugs, doctors also induce interferons, proteins that human cells naturally release as an alarm to other cells that there is an infection in the body. They are not specific to a certain virus but responds to all viruses and all stages of viral replication.
Welcome to Science Saturday. I'm Kasturi Manikam. Today we look at science news ranging from bumblebees to global warming. First, an ambitious Mars exploration project has been postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The ExoMars mission, which was scheduled to launch in July this year, is on hold till 2022. Scientists say they also need more testing for the rover. ExoMars is a joint effort by the European Space Agency and Russia's Roscosmos. The launch delay could mean another two years' wait. This is when the Earth is close enough to the red planet to send a craft there without using too much extra fuel. More relief for upper limb amputees. Researchers from the University of Michigan have created an updated nerve interface technology to help upper limb amputees better control their prosthesis. This technology wraps tiny muscle grafts around the nerve endings of amputees' arms to amplify signals that come through nerves. This enables them to operate bionic hands with greater real-time precision. Also, implanting these muscle grafts prevents the emergence of nerve masses or neuromas that can lead to phantom limb pain. Bumblebees can use various sensors to identify objects like humans. Researchers from Queen Mary University of London have discovered that the species can visually identify sugar rewards in cubes in a lit environment after touching them in darkness. So far, it's believed that only humans can form mental images through multiple senses. Experts say the new finding can shed light on the scientific research about how human brains generate visual representations. The global mean sea level has hit its highest value on record in the past year. The World Met Organization says the increasing amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere has caused the melting of the ice sheet in the Greenland and Antarctica, as well as the heating of their ocean. The heat also reached a record 2 km depth in the sea last year. The WMO warns that a new peak of the annual global temperature will likely come in five years if humans do not cut down on greenhouse emissions. Well, that's all for today. If you have any comments, please let us know and stay in touch with us on our website and social media platform. This is CGT and Check It Out. See you next time.